episode commencing in 3, 2, 1. Episode initiated. Welcome back to another claw-popping, mind-bending, lightning-calling episode of this week's uncanny adventure of X-Cosmic Critman. This is your GM Patrick here, your genetic mutation manifesting at puberty. And we have an enticing, astonishing story to tell here with me. In order to tell it are my five gifted youngsters. So join me in welcoming them to the brotherhood of evil podcast players across the digital table from me. The cool visor wearing leader of the bunch. It's Miles Plain Raimi. Good evening. On my right to the elderly Australian cutting fools. Whenever he gets mad, he has... Uh, metal bones. Did I say Australian? Yeah, you did. Sure, say Australian. yes, you did. It's Tyler playing a dross. Hey, to his left, she wears long gloves so she doesn't supernova everyone she touches. It's Rebecca playing a Lindra. Hello, to my left. Do you know what happens to an Ahsoki struck by lightning? Why, it's Drew playing Knack Feldspar. I was gonna do that same line and well, I do, do, just take it. No, no, go for no, it. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> and finally, uh, to Drew's left, the bold smarty leading this ragtag party, it's Jabert as Andis148. Hey. So, I mean, I, we just talked about it before we started recording, but I was like, oh, the intros this season are uh, comic book movies. And I was like, why would I write? Wolverine is an Australian in well, the intro. It's because Hugh Jackman. It's because Hugh Jackman, Hugh Jackman is an Australian. Well, I was also, like, this doesn't make any sense, Patrick. Also, didn't he? Sh- well, there was a, a a cartoon that had Wolverine as an Australian. Was there? It was. Yeah, Pride of the X Men. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and not Canadian, like originally. No, uh, he was Australian. It, it's it's a weird movie. Or, it's a pilot, I guess. For a, a show that never happened, <laughs> you know, <laughs> maybe because they didn't do, they didn't read the comics, you know, like all the the, no, the, the wild honestly, Wolverines in Australia. It's professor, a good, professor it's a good Xavier pilot. Is a, professor Xavier is like an Olympic athlete, <laughs> like <laughs> running around. No, no, it's it's a really it's a really good pilot. Oh boy, guys! Last week you all explored the now active but f- formerly very ancient and silent technomagic ruins of supposedly the Civ Empire. And you came across a huge, very inviting tube at the bottom of a, a large winding ramp. I love a good tube. And a massive circular room. So is Raimi, apparently. <laughs> and yeah, you poked around Raimi and determined it is some kind I po- of I poked around and found out. <laughs> yeah, I poked around, found out. But you figured out other sites maybe weren't active, so it wasn't working. But in last week's episode, Rebecca, uh, Miles cast a spell to try and infiltrate that teleporter network. What spell did he cast? Um, just one second. Let me consult my notes. <laughs> while, while she's looking at her paper notes, Patrick, shuffling, paper shuffling. <laughs> Patrick, did you say teleporter? Teleporter. <laughs> teleporter. <laughs> yeah, the pen porter is in another room. Oh, uh, listeners, you're in for it this week. I'm coming off of uh, a, a oh, terrible oh, cold. Oh, <laughs> Raimi uses digital doorway. <laughs> yeah, it's digital doorway. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, as you went in uh, to try and leave this room after figuring out you can't really get through that way, an ominous countdown started and triggered a devastating disintegration chamber trap. How much damage Jabert was Andis dealt from failing that fortitude save. Oh, it's quite a lot. Let me check my notes here. It was so much. <laughs> it was before this enormous uh, link that I tried to. <laughs> oh, need- geez, Louise, that was so much. You're going to need your answer. 108. Oh, goodness gracious. Yes. Yes, indeed. But that was a lot of D12s. <laughs> <laughs> there were two re-rolls of fortitude checks that happened as the, the trap went off that came from, from Nack and Alindra, resulting in a one success and one failure. Miles, made from the leathery hide of the mountain eel, what is the name of the magical item that allowed them to re-roll those fort saves? Isn't it just the, the eel jacket? <laughs> it is not. The, I mean, it is an eel 
a leather jacket, but that is not the name that's of it. That's what we call it. Yeah, yeah that, 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 that's what we call it. So. Yeah. It is a resilient jacket. Resilient. I feel like I should get some credit for that. <laughs> you got that it was a jacket after you said it was made of a mountain the old way to go. After disarming the trap and moving to rest, you guys found yourself with an unexpected visitor in the form of Raimi Part 2, with one Raimi attacking the other, and then both of them casting a spell in combat. Tyler, we had two critical fails to attack, and two failures that resulted in weapons flying out of people's hands, though yours uh, for a dross was a fan-submitted one who submitted the fumble Slippery situation, loose grip. Rabbit? Ooh, I'm, I was looking for R-A-B-B-1-T. Uh, yes, it is rabbit. <laughs> it's, it's rabbit. <laughs> yes. And last but not least, true. as Knack tried to sort out which Raimi was real, which was fake, used sense motive, perception, and diplomacy to try and calm this encounter down without murdering Raimi's. But you didn't use your heart. My question to you is, what is your favorite snack and uh, drink of all time? Snack, Ooh. food, and, and drink. Snack, food. So, uh, savory. I love uh, Cool Ranch Doritos. Oh, we, we don't need to go into categories. <laughs> is that your favorite all time? <laughs> yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that. Yes. And uh, a drink. I love a good Dr. Pepper. Oh, you are a pepper. That's a, that's a good combo. That's a very a spice-heavy combo. Cool Ranch and Dr. P. As the clone dissolved before you guys' very eyes, the rest of the team was berated by Raimi for ever doubting he was the genuine article and showing off his rad phantom cycle. Uh, while this was happening, Andis 148 looked inward and, and cast a spell-like augury and attempted to gain insight on whether this Raimi is going to be a danger or not. So that's where this week starts. Can we say out of the phantom cycle is playing genuine yeah yes of course it's uh donna's cousin genuine <laughs> now i gotta say that doppelganger summoning that motorcycle was ugh, top 10 moments of the entire entire show for me ah, it would have been awesome if we could have had some sort of race or like just yeah, <laughs> figure out which is the real <laughs> do an entire oh, side man. episode of you guys just racing and then dodging other holographic uh, I mean, carolers. We can, we, we, we can do that when we're ultimately, uh, ultimately teaming up and uh, <laughs> we taking a, down we get crime. A, <laughs> yeah, we you, get a, you uh, sort out your differences and then high five and he starts melting. <laughs> <laughs> time cop ah. rules. Oh my gosh, that's excellent. Uh, yeah, this week's episode does indeed start inside the Silicon second brain of the Andis unit where we see an idyllic digital reconstruction of a, a fantastical world of, of vast forests and hills surrounding some rocky mountains. There's smoke that rises from a small village at the, the base of this mountain. And we see walking up the hillsides, a memory manifestation of two past Andises or Andesi. Yeah. And uh, Andes. <laughs> the, the Andes. <laughs> Whose number they don't recall, but who have been here for, for many, many centuries. Uh, one is in a short sleeve dress shirt, corduroy pants, uh, with a pocket protector and glasses. The other wears metal helmets and fur pelts, the weapon at his side. The more nerdier dressed one says, uh, well, well, Viking Andes, the, do you think we're going to be getting our tie-breaking vote today to which he responds oh me no no accountant and this perhaps they they have not made up their minds methinks all anduses are weird <laughs> <laughs> they continue this uh, presupposes that there's an andus that chooses to live that way <laughs> <laughs> right exactly i mean that was like that was like in the mid 90s you know it was uh it was a, it was a simpler time <laughs> They continue walking until they find a small cave and inside resting amongst a small shrine of flickering candles is indeed Andus 147. Uh, cousin, have you determined the best response to sins? Says Viking Andus. 
Oh, am, am, am I, I am I in this one four seven? I figured you were still. Oh, oh okay. Them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and this one four seven is going to close their eyes and look through the the pinpoint that is the ocular receptors of Andis 148 and <laughs> you see Raimi showing off his rad cycle just like revving it just rum, rum. <laughs> my saddle <laughs> and 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 this, and this 147 says I regret my everything <laughs> I should have stayed I should have stayed uh, it looks like so much fun no um uh, wait this, now there's two rabies oh man <laughs> there's two of them and they're both have sweet motorcycles <laughs> is uh, everyone getting ice cream now what <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so uh and this would look out and see Raimi there and um, see the cherubic glint of mischief in his eye and say, this is one that you can trust. And then opens their eyes again. And with that, Andis 148 maybe gets some like soothing wheel (laughs) kind of responses in what took months of internal processing time in the exocortex, you know, was whatever the, the spell time for Augury is like a couple minutes Mm -hmm. to, to get a response. And maybe that uh, transports you back a few years to the first time you met Raimi in the former fusion queen <laughs> bar where the renewal ceremony was what what do you think miles uh Ramey's first like introduction was to to andis 148 after you know getting situated and well so at, into at, this world at that point in time i feel like Ramey being as more introspective or introverted that he was he would have waited for andis to say something to see what person came out. <laughs> what was baby and his one for eight's first words? Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, because for, for, for Raimi, like one of his, you know, closest confidants and dearest friends was, you know, moving forward. And so he doesn't, he understands that he doesn't know this new, new person, this and his one for eight. Like he, he, he would, he would want to accept them. He, because he still holds on to the idea that, that this is still Andis, mm. but he doesn't, he doesn't know this, this, this being yet. So he would probably how, wait. How weird because would that be in real life? If like, it would be I just like weird. yeeted out of this body and someone else moved in like a new tenant. It was just like, <laughs> Hey guys, I, uh, people, people be right all the time. <laughs> people what be is rushing this all the time. You would, you would just, you would, you would meet your friends. You'd be like, God, ah, you, you refreshed again. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sorry. Apparently so. Yeah. Well, because, now I, mean, I only like Dave Matthews band. <laughs> <laughs> well, because even thinking about how Remy was in the first season, even though he had become close to everyone in, by the end of season one, he was still kind of in that, you know, reserved kind mm-hmm. of mode he wasn't the person that he's become years later okay. so he, he would he would still be kind of like trying to figure out what's going on so mm-hmm. he, he wouldn't have said anything at first he would have waited for and this one for right to say something all right so b- buck pass to you jabert let's wrap <laughs> this up this <laughs> memory within a memory <laughs> i mean um, i'm sorry I, that's just what the character would, would have it's would okay have you can just say i wouldn't have yeah. said nothing jabert go and this one for eight climbs up and looks around or sort of uh, leans up from the vat of goo what was it what, what did we call it a crash a crash and looks around at all the people who are looking expectantly at them smiles wide and says oh my i seem to have a lot of friends this is a good thing <laughs> uh and uh, immediately uh, hops out and then runs over to the snack the snack table to, to <laughs> Get to, to see what see what uh, what sweet grub they had at this at this poor old sap's funeral, and uh, maybe with a mouthful of nachos uh, is standing next to Ramy and says, "Hi, my name's my name's Angus. Wait, who are you?" <laughs> <laughs> I am Remy Quindar, and I could not be happier right now. Nice. <laughs> um. <laughs> Okay, well, already Peter Griffin now. <laughs> Delicious, <laughs> and 
that that's the memory going through your mind as uh, uh yeah just, as just you come out of the auger nothing but doritos and dr pepper over here <laughs> and see <laughs> uh, see Ramy <laughs> on the, the bike you're pretty sure that maybe if even if this isn't the real Ramy, which i'll never tell obviously as gm mm-hmm. if, uh, if there was some switchery that went on but even if it wasn't well, if there, if there is i'm done with this show <laughs> bar none done with this show <laughs> <laughs> well, what I'm saying is like, uh, you know, if, if you got I'm saying is- doubled up, then who knows what the real one is? <laughs> the real <laughs> journey is the should- Ramies we made along the way. You should practice a few more times just getting in and out of the uh, the tube a this couple time, more times. This time, this time, don't touch him. <laughs> <laughs> just multiplicity this, uh, right. this thing. Michael Keaton. Yeah. So you guys take a 10 minute rest move on and crack open this door after you've disarmed the the trap and you find this inner ring around the circular room with three doors going in a a couple various directions. Each of them has a lock on them that needs to be bypassed with with a a hacking or an engineering. I think you've determined you guys just want to pop into this first door. I can have map. I can have map. Yeah, I, I see nothing. It's a it's a visual game. I've already uh, <laughs> Ooh, opened up the area over here, but to get in, uh, make make me a computer check. Just see how it goes. Anyone? Uh, well, yeah, I think mostly you because you can now comprehend Sibian, so it'll be a little bit easier. Oh, but not if you roll a two natural. Two. Uh, I can't. Can, Hold on. Can I assist? I think it would just take a couple of of uh, tries here because it won't be like impossible oh man i'm that oh, one might right be. i forgot <laughs> i'm not nearly as good at computers as i used to be <laughs> <laughs> it's still pretty good i was about to say oh ooh, drew rolled a 19 i think after seeing Ramy do one of them you might be able to to figure out some of these these locking mechanisms and indeed that will be enough to get through the biometric kind of lock that they have on this door. You can like walk around the ring and see the other two doors are pretty much the exact same. So just picking one at or, random. Or ride around if you have a motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of like a, a big circle, but not a regular circle. It's a freaky circle. So opening up this door, you see rows of floor to ceiling metal shelves with containers on them crowding the north side of this oblong kind of kidney shaped chamber there's packets of what looks like ammunition maybe deconstructing weapon parts and like panels armor components computer pieces kind of crammed amongst the shelves and there are tons of crates with maybe indecipherable symbols not necessarily like language runes but all kinds of and and jumbled piles to the south alongside a a sleek looking metallic desk facing the southern western side wall the desk itself is maybe the sole bastion of tidiness here in what looks like a a haphazardly stocked warehouse oh you guys just walking in walking a boot well i'm i'm riding in oh yeah can we roll a perception boop boop thank you please do Come on, Nack. You can do better than that. Nacklin. Natural 19 on that. Ooh. Man, natural 19. It's not like a 50 or something. I'm just I'm so not used to these uh Yeah, Alindra's not characters. good at skills. You do not have to worry about Alindra. Oh, uh, operatives. We miss you so much on the I, I miss my operatives am, so much. I am no longer a skill monkey. Quite the opposite. Wait, what's the opposite of a skill monkey? Skill donkey? <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna the say. opposite of a monkey is a donkey. <laughs> I was going to say a combat donkey or something. Because I was on the exact think, same wavelength. That was like, it's got to be a donkey, right? I think it's, a, it's only one letter changed. I think the opposite of monkey, I guess it's not really opposite, but a, a skill ape. <laughs> You've got big ape hands for your skill rolls. <laughs> something along those lines. Uh, donkey, yeah. Donkey. yeah. You don't see anything special in here besides these massive areas but the, the, on the desk there does seem to be a computer console with some what looks like stacked discs and things nearby data chips of some sort that almost look crystalline in nature it seems to be 
um, kind of like a multi-tiered desk with uh, different computer components and what looks like a Civian input uh, keyboard that looks like it's in like three pieces. We, need, we really need some comprehend languages, folks. Rainy's gats it. But what would you guys like to do here? Can I peek in some of these? Did you say they were like shelves or like drawers? Yeah, these things we're seeing here in like the main part of the room are both shelves and there's some boxes amongst them. Maybe Different anything, parts. Just scraps and parts. Uh, can I make an engineering check to see uh, what what they might be parts of or for? Engineering indeed. Let's see here. 30 is what I got. Well, first off, I should say... It's pretty, oh, it's pretty booby trapped, huh? Pretty yeah. good roll. <laughs> no, no. I think look at that's those enough. Monkeys. That's enough to to realize that most of the stuff that you're looking at here seems to have shorted out or otherwise kind of degraded over time. You start like sifting through some things, like. You can see it is completely busted or, or broken. And every once in a while, like maybe a, a component of like a single weapon will will work or seems to be in working order. But sorting through all of these shelves and kind of, I mean, taking a quick look at them, you can kind of tell a lot of them are pretty far advanced of packed worlds technology outside of like extremely cutting edge very high priced things Mm -hmm. but it'll probably take some time to to sort through these various shelves to find pieces you can cobble together to make something that is salvageable okay so but generally right now most of it's sort of you know burned out you know Mm -hmm. equipment okay like i said even in just like a, a quick cursory glance you can see like some pieces mm-hmm. of maybe armor that could be like salvage be some some pieces of uh, let's see well, maybe we should maybe we should uh come back in here and uh grab all this stuff before we before we take off right uh, anybody else want to do anything here can we take a look at this desk mm-hmm. um, yeah there may be an inventory on that computer you know, mm. of what's in the room. Right. Hey, yo, so. R- Ramey, scoot over here. We got a, we got something to check out, and I need your your language help. Uh, listen, room. listen to me. I need you for a language. How weird is that? <laughs> <laughs> Fun times. A- as you move over here, a couple of these boxes uh, to your side kind of knock over as you see what looks like various metal components kind of forming up Voltron style and, and building on top of one another, almost like a big old transformer. And uh, this you is say, what you should... when you say big old, Oh, big old, big old, uh-oh. big old guy. But let me just show you what, what this looks like. Uh-oh. It's a big old, it, what looks like just a walking suit of armor with a big old knife for a blade. And a looks like a cannon. Oh, it has a knife head. for a blade. Uh, that knife. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you try as late as a knife? <laughs> oh, I think I know who it's attacking. <laughs> the surprise round, real quick. <laughs> um, as it uh, indeed is going to take that knife blade and just ram it right down Max's throat. Uh, we're in combat. Let's make some initiative rolls. Boy, should have known better. Keep your mouth shut when I'm. Oh God, sick and recuperating. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, natural one for Amy. Oh, you were very surprised by this thing. Well, <laughs> vroom vroom. <laughs> Cycle time. I know. Okay. Yep. So this thing forms up and will immediately make that integrated blade arm attack on you. A knack attack. A natural three attack. What is your flat-footed KAC? 31 minus 2, 29. Okay, so three on the dice is a hit. Oh, no, that's not good. That's not good at all. It's not what you like to see. Oh, I'll roll some damage. Not bad on 66. That is uh, 46 points of damage. 
That is 23 slashing, 23 sonic, as you feel this thing vibrating through your armor, cutting your a fur underneath your your armor here, as uh, it will in Sivian, I think, say, you know, something along the lines, Ramey, of, you know, defenses activated. <laughs> Attack mode protocol initiated. Hey, okay. we are in initiative turn order. The the rest of you back in the stacks, the rows of armor, perhaps here some commotion. You can see down the southern end of the room. Edros Veronis, you are first. Okay, that's awesome. We're gonna spend a move action to move up a little bit, and we're gonna swift action flip the spear around to be the the boomstick of fates instead of the mm. spear of fates and we're gonna boomstick it Ooh, blasting with a ranged attack him with the ranged attack who knows if it will matter does a 29 hit your ea huh. eac i'm giving it a little bit of a cover here in the back uh, that is a miss Wow, that sucks. That's my just a little bit of a miss. Andis one four eight, you are next. All right, let's see. I, I totally misunderstood how a thing worked with this. Uh, with this thing. Sorry. All right, I have two EPs. I'm gonna spend one to get my bab up, and then I'm gonna move forward. And as I move, I'm gonna draw a powerful. Uh, hammer. The old <laughs> manifest my big old hammer. And it's clobbering time. As they say. Yeah. Uh, clobber. A 34 to hit. Against KAC. Correct. You've been giving him a little boost. That's a hit. Oh boy. Uh, that would be 49 points of uh, bludgeoning. Just yield smack in this thing. You perhaps dent in a big chunk of the the armor that looks like maybe a, it wouldn't be like a bipedal creature. You see at least three what looks like standing legs here. Um, oh lord! And yeah, it responds in like Savian like threat target acquired <laughs> <laughs> large threat. I'm taking a look at this this armor that is just like operating on its own it seems like this looks heavy duty this seems perhaps like even a civian equivalent of the very own power armor that you are wearing oh yes knack feldspar you are next sir you've been sliced by this this blade it's it's about 10 feet away from you this this set of armor yeah, I'm going to take a guarded step back. Mm-hmm. And can I roll an engineering check? Please do. It's a big old construct. Uh, that's a three for a 20. <clears throat> that's not going to do. I'm sorry. Boo. Uh, uh, come on, guys. Can we get him? <laughs> can we? Can we, please? Please. For old neck. And anything else? I think that's all I can do. Oh, well. Usually, oh, I guess I, oh, yeah, I can attack with get him. Uh, yeah, take so I'm gonna a shot and get him. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna usually sh- something that you do shoot. Uh, with, uh, Patrick, stop telling him how to play his character. Oh, oh no, actually, actually no, you said that's that was yeah, <laughs> he said it's the end of his turn. I think that's just uh, Let's oh, see oh, I tried to save you, Drew. I tried oh, to save you from yourself. Oh, <laughs> oh it's a dirt, dirt hit, a natural oh, wow. one with minimum just, damage. Oh. Gonna go ahead and, and sign off for the night. Uh, have fun, everybody. <laughs> I'll see you next week. Official critical fumble deck or the Crittermander? Yeah, we'll do official. Oh, fish. No, Laser pistol blast. Pew, pew, pew. What's, uh, I think this deserves it. It's no good with a natural one on the dice. Critical fail. Kaboom. Kaboom. Boom. Okay, this one's called Error 404. Target not found. Your weapon can't be used to make an attack until the weapon is repaired with a successful computer's check. <laughs> Boy, howdy. You, you hate these technological weapons. You gotta, you gotta update that OS every Dude, once If only in a while, you had so. a tail blade to fall back on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're on to Lindra Vallis. All right, Alindra's going to jump forward, and not jump, 
you know, walk. Okay. On her feet. <laughs> I guess I could fly if I really wanted to. I am, by the way, going toward Graviton Attunement. Mm-hmm. There's a, a small box in front of the the thing here. It's a little hard to see. I'm sorry. The, to, to get up on top of it, about five feet up, you will need to make a jump check or a climb check. Could I just defy gravity? Yeah, so I'm sorry. You do have to <laughs> jump over there. <laughs> yes, yes, and then and end up on the box. All right. Uh, that will provoke, though. Are you okay with that? That's fine. All right. Taking up my AOE. It is going to slash again, right? I will right, make a slam attack this time. Comes at you with the other arm that does not have a, a blade. I'd prefer slashing, but <laughs> sorry, I'm just trying to get like sometimes <laughs> you kill things in one round, so I want to try and get like every kind of attack it can do in. A 12 on the dice, that is gonna be a hit. This is a little more damage. I mean, potentially a little bit more damage. 8d6. Yes. 48 points of bludgeoning is the cost to get within melee range of this thing. But now it is right in front of you. You're like eye level with it's where perhaps a face would be in this suit of armor underneath what looks like a massive ranged weapon of some kind, some kind of. Sorry, what kind of damage was that? Just straight bludgeoning? Just bludgeoning, yeah. All right, I am going to take a strike with my solar weapon at it. Okay. It's a 30 to hit. Against KC is a miss. Aw. So sorry. So sorry. That was an eight on the dice. Ooh, it would have been good, good damage, too. You don't want to use a reroll on that one, do you? I could. You could. I mean, probably roll better than an eight, right? Yeah, let me try it. I'll do it. All right. Uh, All right. An official Norse Foundry reroll. Yeah. Because we've got some official cosmic crit metal dice they supply oh my goodness the <laughs> the foley <laughs> <laughs> sounds like you're ro- rolled in, in a wine class <laughs> I love well it. i i rolled it in a bowl actually <laughs> i don't want my die like going across the room What'd you um get? i got an 11 on the actual real life dice so three better than your 30 before that's a hit oh it is a hit nice yeah. awesome <clears throat> and original damage right Original so damage. Yep. Because why it is worth it. Okay. Wow. So slash in damage. And is, how much of that is fire? I do need to know that separate, unfortunately. Let's see. Um, it's like 16. I don't think my macro is right. Maybe it is. Yeah, that 16 is the fire because it's 3d6. Okay, yeah. So it doesn't look like all of it goes through, but a good chunk of it, perhaps maybe a little more. You're you're keeping keeping Andis <laughs> keeping pace with uh, them, and that is going to take us to its turn. Oh, how about you use one of these? <laughs> Did Drew go to the other computer and bring a like a rolling a mouse pad? Brought me a dice tray. It's an official <laughs> Norse foundry. It is an official dice Norse oh. foundry dice tray. Why do you have this? That's I cool. I mean, it's awesome. <laughs> Too Thank bad she you. won't be able to use it until she's level 14, which is going <laughs> to be a few <laughs> episodes. A late Christmas present. Now Drew, who still has his re-roll, is going to need it. And now he's, he's going to have to go down to... <laughs> he's going to go downstairs to... <laughs> This went back. I mean, this was really sweet, but it went backwards real fast. <laughs> okay. On the armor's turn, it has Rami, Andis, and Alindra within its reach. Andis. Hmm. Let's see here. Give me Uno Memento. Because guys beat this thing to initiative. Yeah, it's not going to full attack. It's, it is indeed going to... <laughs> To its special ability, you see a massive shield wall of what looks like crackling energy kind of show up right in front of it. That uh, comes right between. Let's see, it looks like Indus and Alindra. It's it's gonna form on its like north northernly wall from you guys. You know, like twelve feet tall. Um, you can probably still on the box get at this thing, Alindra, but it'll be providing it cover. 
Because as its move action is its standard, it will... Well, Taku did the most damage. It's going to be a Lindra with a another slam attack. Oh, can, I use my, can I use my Eclipse defense? Uh, yes, yes. What does that do again? Um, so that allows me to... When I'm attacked, I can make a melee attack. And if it exceeds KAC plus eight, then it deals half damage. And I get a plus four to attack bonus when I'm attuned, which I am right now because I'm Graviton too. You really want to hit this one because I rolled a natural 20. Natural 20 on the attack. So oh my could, God. Could turn a crit into a regular hit, I guess, basically here. All right. So I get a plus four to this. Oh no. Oh boy. Oh no. <laughs> Let my crit life shine. <laughs> I'm very happy I I put that shield up. Uh critical shout out. I haven't had a crit this season yet, have I? I think it's been all well, you guys are on those twenties. Oh, uh, we've got some new ones from from the critters from our Patreon subscribers. Let's see. <laughs> We just mentioned this, but I also asked our fans to throw some of their trivia as critical shout outs. This one's from One Hot Llama. What was the original name of Raimi's Rumpus Room? Oh, you're asking me. The Fusion Queen. Queen. The v- yeah, yeah, Fusion Queen. That's right. I mentioned it just a little while ago. You guys were paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, supporting us on Patreon. If you guys are already members and haven't submitted a critical shout out, go ahead and do that. I have a lot of dice to roll. Let's roll it. Picking out a Lindra. Picking out a Lindra. Will you break your record of 108 damage? No, not not here. It is... Oh, wait. I guess I could take a... I could take a critical hit card for this. What am I doing? Oh, uh, please don't. <laughs> this, is a, this is a beefy boy. It's a beefy boy fight. And this is only bludgeoning damage. I kind of wish I had done the energy attack, but do, do, do. let's see if I want to use it. <laughs> this one's actually pretty good, so I mean, it still does the double damage. It's called Spun Around. The target's next attack that misses is re-rolled against its nearest ally. Target's wow. next attack the that misses. Raimi? Nobody well, if I next to Alindra. Oh, no, it, the targets of... Oh, yeah, your next miss can potentially hit an ally. That's a weird one. <laughs> yeah. It is going to be 96 points of bludgeoning damage, Rebecca. Oh, oh, oh um, spicy. What? And that is its turn as we go on to Hrami. Just moves right over its shield and just goes thwomp down on Melindra. Oh, and I'm sorry, there's also... I, I moved away from my area in the notes. There's a critical effect on the blade that I've, of course, moved away from. Make me a... Oh, wait, no. That, that's only on the, the blade. Never mind. <laughs> Miles, what do you want to do? All right. So, Raimi is <clears throat> close to this creature. So, he is going to cast... Parking Sturgeon? Jolting Surge. Uh, ooh, Jolting which Surge. Which is a... You touch target... And essentially, if the target is an electrical device, such as a robot, mm-hmm. uh, I get plus two to my attack roll. Yep, it's a EAC attack, so go ahead and make that while you're next to this guy. It's a 25 to hit. Against EAC, that, that includes the, the get em. Oh, uh, 26. Oh, get is plus two, but that is a... Oh, so 27. That is a miss. You've rolled... Is this only 11 on the dice? Do you want to uh, re-roll or or Um, make a move action? I'm trying to think. I'm always so conservative with my re-rolls that I feel like I never use them properly. Yeah, burn them. (laughs) Burn them down. (laughs) But no, I'm just going to move. I'm going to move behind Andis. Okay. That will also provoke as it's got its attack of opportunity back. Are you okay doing that as you, you head wait, wait, wait. It has its attack of opportunity back? Because it had its, as, its as turn. As soon as it goes, yeah. You're, you're right behind the button again, like in the <laughs> the hollow fight. Uh, you've got <laughs> really bad luck. Garbage. Um, yeah, just know that if you if you attack me, you're a racist. Crit, 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 crit. 
<laughs> I mean, technically, I hate I mean, white humans. <laughs> Natural twenty on the dice, yay! <laughs> Two twenties in a row. Oh for me. no! Uh, well, well, one Raimi's not white. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Versian humans versus humans. Let's see here. No, I've got to mess up my. my burn, space is are you just my notes old again? drama coming up? Oh like, my is gosh, this, it's, what, it's happening all over exactly again. Exactly like your uh, other night. It's exactly like last night when Patrick crit crit my party like seven <laughs> times in a row. I mean, oh. it's fine. Like, like if Raimi dies, I'm done with this show. The so worst. Raimi, Patrick. The worst one was like, like five people were down and like one person was running away and my last hit was a natural 20 um, <laughs> in, a, in a Pathfinder 2E fight. Anyway, yeah. critical shout out to let, let's do our friend Dtref again, David who says uh, I want Alindra and Devasho to be friends and I don't <laughs> David I don't like that uh, that combo or that that potential flanking buddy scenario <laughs> that's like my worst nightmare I think nightmare. they would get along really well actually no. it, it would be fun because it, it, then it would allow one of the Salarians to just be Graviton power focused a lot more so there would be mm-hmm. a lot more Graviton shenanigans I think that would be allowed. lots of like yin and yang going on Mm-hmm. It'd be fun. Mm-hmm. It's so much more damage, Miles. 112 damage. It's a new record. Oh, his record! <laughs> For this, uh, this combat at the very least, this season probably for sure. Uh, as you escape, this thing uh, takes its toll and, and slams, slams on into you. But you are out of danger now, out of its reach, and you've taken that attack of opportunity for your teammates, mm-hmm. your buddies. That is a lot of bludgeoning damage. Wow. That's fine. Uh, turn two. We are back to the top of the turn order with Adros. Patrick, if Adros runs in over here, is that flanking or is this flanking? I'm trying to flank with Alindra, who's up on a box, but I just want to make sure from a rule standpoint, that's going to work. Yep. Yep. You can. You have to be on the opposite side. So, yeah. Right here. Be, yeah. Or right where you're moving here. All righty. So I'm All right. Uh, Taken <laughs> back there. I guess. Raimi tanked that hit so Adros could move around and flank. Makes total sense. The Technomancer yeah. tanks for the soldier, as as it should be. Uh, spear, spear of fates. Ooh, melee attack. Spicy. <laughs> I've rolled an eight and missed. Oh, oh, but we have get him right. Get him. And flanking. we have flanking. So mm-hmm. that's whatever that number is. It's at least 31, 32 against KAC because you've gotten behind its shield. Uh, that is a hit. Woo! And it would be EAC. And I'm oh, I, yeah, I, definitely I, a I hit. Regret, <laughs> I regret that this is fire damage. <laughs> right. It, it's got a little bit of fire resistance. How much damage did you do in total? 53. It looks like the majority of that went through as you get around the backside of it and score into what looks like maybe a whole or a divot for like a tail perhaps or some kind of other appendage that would come out the backside of of whatever this creature is that would wear this animated armor that's my a compliment of actions awesome andis 148 back to you oh boy i'm stepping forward mm. uh, so i can uh, reach around this crackling energy wall a little bit better Mm-hmm. I'm just sort of, uh, it's, it's just, it, you can't hide from me. <laughs> and I'm going to swing my powerful hammer fist. And get him as plus two at this point. Is that right? Oh, it is. Oop. Hey, 44 to hit. Oh, I think a natural 19 is going to do at a super hit. Yeah. Ooh. Lower on the damage, though. Oh, <gasps> oh, oh, but, 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 but critical effect, critical effect. How about, oh, who's coming up after me? I don't want that. I don't want that. Severe wound. Whoa. This bad boy is Vorpal. Oh, okay. that's cool. Oh, it, does your cool. weapon have that automatically, or is that something you can change? That is something uh, you can add to it. You can add a fusion to it. So, oh, wait, wait. Oh, hang on. Hang on a minute. I might have messed this up badly. Let me make sure that. That's like, can you do it on the fly? <laughs> No, 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 no! It's it's it was this was a thing we 
I, I asked about like a few weeks ago. I was like, I, I realized that I like purchased some very expensive piece of oh, equipment that like I, I couldn't thing. actually that I couldn't actually do. I was like, can I just swap this out for something else? Because I also realized my attacks weren't magical, and I'm like, I'm a level 13 <laughs> character without magical attacks. Like, what am I doing here? So I just <laughs> yeah. swapped it out for a. Okay. Okay. Whew, thank goodness. For a second, I was like, I was like, wait, can only slashing weapons benefit from Vorpal? But no, bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing. So, okay. Yeah. So it'll be a severe wound, I think. Which Tyler, you know how severe wound works. I've never gotten the opportunity to use. So it severe before. wound just means you roll it's, on the yeah. wound table twice. Ooh. I don't know if I believe. Well, is I, it is this constructive things, immune to wound? <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of things on the severe wounds will not affect constructs. Right. But I will say, if you can get a limb, potentially one of these arms can be lopped off. It has two attacks: a slam and this vibro blade. So, right. <clears throat> and, and, and you, only get a, to, you, you only get to choose one. You, you roll twice, choose one. You choose one, right? Okay, it still gets the save attempt. Right. Okay. Here we go. Oh my! Both sides of the dice. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, so. a one and a twenty. So a one is a bleed, which would not do anything, and the twenty is a brain, which would stun which, it and not do anything. It also doesn't have a brain. I'm sorry. Well, that's yeah. the wrong time to roll a natural twenty. <laughs> I gotta say though, <laughs> the t- right time t- for t- natural the season, one. Right? Tis the season. Yeah. yeah. So, that was a very holiday. Oh yeah, it's, it's red and green. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. That is still going to do 38 points damage, and that is going to take us into bloody territory with this guy. Oh, yeah. As we go on to Knack. Uh, all right, guys. Sorry, give me a second here. He said it was computer's check to fix the gun. It is indeed. Will a 28 do it? 28 is going to be enough, yes. And uh, you still have a, a standard here as you're <laughs> just hitting the, the OS on your laser pistol. Ha! Got it! Get him! And fire. Oh, that's not going to do it. Uh, nothing but threes tonight. Oh, And that stupid Dowdies. one. Get him still up as we go to Alundra. And there's a wall between me and the enemy, right? It, it has cover from you, yes. But oh, you're but flanking, so a little bit of that negated yeah you're like trying to attack over it uh where you're at, at on the box it is like a well I, I can tell you what the equivalent in the pack rules would be a titan shield for for the armor so it is like a tower shield it has uh, of pure energy has kind of formed in front of you so you can attack around it or on top of it but it's do, getting, I I get, cover. do i get concealment as well from it <laughs> no all right. Well, I am going to. I'm still graviton attuned, and I'm going to activate debris field, which gives me a fifty percent mischance, or them a fifty percent mischance against me. Okay. Is, is that a standard or? The standard. Okay. All right. Taking a defensive tact as we go on to. It's turn, and as I've already done its shield ability, and it's kind of backed into a corner here. I think it's going to double attack, and let's see who it is going for. Andis and Alindra. So, first one's going to be the slam attack against Andis, and then the blade against Alindra. Do Andis first. Natural oh. 18 is a hit. Oh. Rolling the rocks. Four. Hey, let's all calm down here, eh, buddy? Eh, buddy? Uh, 52 points of bludgeoning damage. All right. So I actually have a little, a, the tiniest bit of DR. <laughs> yes, Sam. I got, well, I got I refuse to take all that, Patrick. <laughs> enough to take some of the pepper off of that, maybe. All right. <laughs> Is it 53? 52. 52. Okay. And the. The blade is coming at you, Alindra. So, I'm sorry, you have a 50% mischance? Is that it? Or 50% mischance. I would also like to use Eclipse Defense and try to strike back. All right. Making that attack. Five on the dice. <laughs> so I don't think that's going to hit your KAC. Well, I, I, well, let me just double check. What is your KAC? It is 32. Yep. So fortunately, that is a miss. I'm not crying about that. <laughs> okay, and we are going on to Raimi's turn. Okay, so 
Um, Remy's a little irritated. He got smacked. He did get smacked by a very racist robot. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, hey, I, I laid down the parameters, and, and Patrick acted accordingly. So I, I can't. I can't. You know. <laughs> There's no taxi backsies. It, it, it's okay for us to, <laughs> to beat up this robot now. <laughs> <laughs> Not right. So, Raimi is going to cast instead of arcing, uh, jolting surge, arcing surge. Ooh, okay, bless. And I spell at it a a line shaped burst, which I think you might have right between Alindra and Mantis. No, if I if, if you if you did the line just right. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it, it's bypassing all your friends. It's it, it goes right through everybody and oh, just hits. The the bad guy. Um, okay, not not a from, try save for a, a from reflex. From the way that he wants to do it. All right, let me roll that reflex. My number. Oh, it was almost a two, but oh, eighteen on the dice will be. This a game is the worst. Twenty-one <laughs> points of electricity damage on the half, but the good news: there's no electricity resistance. Yeah, great. I feel wonderful. We. You put some how damage on the don't how do what, lines Tyler. Work? Don't what? How do, how do lines work? How do line attacks work in Starfighter? I thought they went from corners. Yeah, so I mean, he can. Uh, I mean, we can draw it out. Go like boop, 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 and then oh wait, no, other direction. Oh, he can bend the line. Well, no, it, you can do it on diagonals. Yeah. Um, and I'm a technomancer, so that's cool. Shit, yeah, doesn't I have to be. I thought I thought you just kind of had to like pick a direction. And it's just like it just went boom straight and yeah, you kind of pick like a point. So I mean, you can pick this like back corner and go loop. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, yeah you, you threaded the needle here between all your friends, which is hilarious. Very but, cool. Uh, turn three, Adros, a a blast of lightning uh, arcs by your face <laughs> as you've got all five original drift rider folks i i just uh, want to beating do, up on this I've, thing i've got get them and flanking I'm, I'm just rolling all the all the, oh we'll just ignore the first one we're just rolling three attacks here oh yeah because i've only got like minus two to these essentially uh my wife's gonna be so mad oh my wife's gonna be so mad my baby's asleep oh, oh shut up tyler oh, oh no, no. Tyler, uh, you might be a little slightly oh, more right. mad I forgot. here. Oh, These are not turned to critical hits. Gosh, no, critical c- contracts can be crit. Oh, can be crit all day long. I, th- well, I've messed up uh, what can and cannot take critical hits <laughs> so many times this season. I will double check as I'm vamping, but the stupid, creepy hollows could not be crit because they were also incorporeal on top of being contracts no this guy does seem to have some beefed up armor that can potentially negate fortification crit fortification not a big one 20 percent chance I'm gonna roll a d10 on the one or two no crit no crit for you oh or tyler wants to roll it oh sorry you go ahead and roll it <laughs> sorry i thought you i thought it was gonna be me yeah all right, now crit crit ahead and a shout out once more for one of the night. Uh, well, we're going to do this one for a couple. Well, I mean, for everyone's crit eventually, I hope from a, a new Patreon subscriber, a new friend, uh, friendly neighborhood K who wants to ask everyone, but especially you, Tyler, right now, what's been your favorite book uh, to run so far? Oh, 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 my favorite book to play. Yeah. Uh, in all of our stuff, huh? Man, I would say only on Cosmic Crit, but yes. Oh, yeah, because that'd be cheating. Only on Cosmic Crit. Favorite book. Probably the one we just did, the junk one. Oh, yeah. Drunker's Delight. Ton of Drunker's Delight. Fun. Can I pick that one? If I could pick that one. Yeah, that's an adventure. I think, book. I think that would be my favorite because we'll hear that or something from Attack of the Swarm. Oh, maybe the book I wrote, but I don't know. Maybe the book you wrote, because that that was a fun book. (laughs) Okay, how much damage are we talking here? Because that might be that might be curtains for this thing. This is going to be eighty-five, eighty-five, and but it is fire, fire and electricity, right? Nope. Oh, is it plasma or just flame? It's flame, right? This is the Inferno Doshko, so it's just fire, just fire damage. 
uh, that is not enough to kill it, unfortunately. Okay. Can I roll my attack and then roll for the wound critical hit? (laughs) Or do I have to roll for the wound critical hit first? Uh, Why don't you just make your... You have a third attack, right? It's looking extremely weakened after that. Okay. Let's just make the third attack then. Oh, well... I'm re-rolling it. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> oh, North Why? Foundry re-roll. We have, re-roll I think- we, we have a Lindra before it, got to, it goes again. Why <laughs> waste it now? You just want to you want to take the credit? You want to take the glory? I want, I want the credit and I have these new dice in front of me and uh, it, it's too tempting. <laughs> I just got to I got to use them. I want to do it. <sighs> Rolling on the table. <laughs> oh, did you roll a natural one? Did you roll a natural one? <laughs> I rolled a natural one. Oh, God. oh no! The spear of faiths. <laughs> look at this! <laughs> look at this hubris! Look at this hubris! <laughs> this unadulterated. Another thing before we started recording, Tyler's like, I settled my dice to ones. He set them on the one side just so they're they're. Just to, I believe, and I quote, to remind me of how trash I am. Uh, <laughs> Tyler, critical fumble deck or the. Uh, oh, was right. All the metal settled to the bottom. <laughs> it settles to the bottom. If you put them like that, you got to put it to the 20s up. Oh. Yes. My Just a reminder we, we are uh, partnered with Norse Foundry, and you can get a 10% discount, I believe, by using code Cosmic Crit to get your own metal dice from them. Uh, what do you want for you your should. critical fumble? Guaranteed Tyler. not to roll a natural one on a, <laughs> on a reroll. Yeah. yeah, they are. I'm not sure. <laughs> Ah, oh, jeez. What am I doing? What am I? Do? Oh, I'm choosing. Let's do. Uh, I did fan last time, so let's just do official. Okay, an official energy fail is called. It worked better in my head. Deal half weapon damage to yourself and oh, yeah. all creatures adjacent to you. You mess up so badly, the spear of fate explodes and kills this thing in front. Of- <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, is it fire damage? <laughs> yeah, but it's had six hit points left oh. after the, the critical hit, so Tyler has critically failed. <laughs> He's succeeded. failed upward. <laughs> yes, and we are out of combat as the Spear of Fates is just spurting fire and plasma in all directions. This catches the, the armor up and it kind of melts down in parts and where it seemed to be bound together with magic or magnets and just kind of sticking to itself is falling into a pile of pieces on the ground. We are out of combat. Truck that one up to Edros. Uh, Edros kill. <laughs> Edros like kicks the the suit of armor. He's like, well, that's not what I meant to do, but man, that worked. This thing's great. <laughs> that uh, that weapon uh, really is incredible, Edros. That is. Uh, yes. <laughs> and, and as he's saying it, he's actually like panning out fire on parts of his clothing <laughs> <laughs> and armor. Uh, it's so an antique weapon. <laughs> Raimi is going to take a, a ten minute rest. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, Miles. How far love, into uh, uh, into hit point damage are you? I am into hit point damage. Like how much <laughs> though is the question? Uh, Thirteen. Ooh, uh, uh, can I roll some uh, treat deadly wounds on old uh, on old Rames? I'll I'll do the same on Alindra. It's, but it's not necessary for Alindra. If we can take a 10 minute rest, I'll get 10 HP back. So oh, I'll be back. Oh, back to I forgot all about that ability. Yeah. So making a medicine check for this 32 medicine check. So that is going to be enough for exceeding the DC by five or more, of course. So it is 13 HP back plus your int modifier i believe which is which That's is five so my full edge feedback oh right all right so it's this success is for there um, um, your 10 minute goes by uninterrupted anybody that wants to take it if you guys want to to wait for teammates before <laughs> poking around and <laughs> disturbing more ghost armor <laughs> um, indeed you can uh, can do that or do whatever you want. What do you, what do you guys is, want to do here? Is the uh, armor is the armage is the armor salvageable? The armor. I mean, you guys have slashed, beaten, <laughs> electrified, and burnt. It is definitely not. Unfortunately, no no backup power armor for for Andis. At, at first, I was looking at this and I was like, "Oh man, Jabir's going to kill me if there's like an exact copy <laughs> if, of if his power <laughs> armor." But 
you think that some of the upgrades that are installed on it yeah. are salvageable with a engineering check, but they're in yeah. such a precarious uh, position. It is possible that they can be destroyed by extracting them if you if you don't get it right on the first go. Okay. Who has the best engineering? You guys can aid as well. So at twenty three, I have seventeen. I also have plus twenty three. Okay. Between the three of us, I think we can do this. All right. <laughs> All right. I believe. <laughs> well, uh, it is only a single roll, so who wants to make it? I am going to try to take out that Titan shield. All okay. right. I'll, I will aid. All right. Can, can I so, also aid, Patrick? Yep. So automatic awesome. aid. So instead of a 23, you're rocking a 27. 27. 27. Not guaranteed, but very possible. 35. Oh, right, because that's with plus four. 35 is exactly what you needed yes! to, to grab that. Titan shield coming out. And there, there sounded like there was uh, a fortification. Can I try to get that one out too? Yes. Fortified plates mark one. Um, I, I should say each of these will take a little bit of time, like maybe another 10 minutes or so. Um, mm. But you guys probably have some other deeds you could be doing in here, like looking at this computer now that there's not a sentry armor next to it. Maybe looking around some more. All right. I'll, I'll keep working on this well. Yeah. Make, make me another engineering check and we'll see how that goes. Yeah. 36, even without the aids. Even so. better. Cool. Uh, yes. So uh, fortified plates mark one and indeed a Titan shield, both of which are. Power armor friendly. You know, awesome. I, don't, I don't think you have like a million upgrade slots, but yeah, I think I've got two more. So, all right. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> and it, well, I, mean, I have two more upgrade slots and then I also have the androids upgrade slot. So I can put my current backup generator just in my android slot. Then. Yeah. Have one spare. Yeah, it does. It does seem like an, an odd duck that wore this armor whatever brought it back to life the if it was a sieve wearing it or some other creature it doesn't seem like super humanoid does anybody want to make a life science check to kind of examine the the armor yeah sure i said it had like three legs and maybe at least yeah at least three phantom tail yeah and like maybe like a scorpion tail or something uh remy can absolutely make a life science check it's a 34 um 32 is what you needed. Yeah, taking a look at this, you can do some of the basics, perhaps, of their anatomy. <laughs> they seem to be very kind of like trunky, truncated, stocky bodies. And indeed, the, the armor is large, but they're, they look to be more medium-sized creatures and have a long kind of segmented neck and, and perhaps a very thick prehensile tail you can see like it's the segmented tail section as well as a, a long long neck kind of cranes around like a, a scorpion's tail right does anybody want to take a, a look at this pc this this computer that does seem to be neat tidy clean operational here on the desk yeah so i'm assuming it's in the civ language though so i'm going to need some language assistance Oh, it is. Um, I'll Remy, provide what's... some computer assistance. Well, uh, I can provide some exa- the language assistance. Yeah. What, what's your computers, Remy? My computer is plus 27. Okay. Yeah. You should probably do this instead of me and I can assist. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <Right. laughs> Mac and Andis are just are making sure that all the plugs stay plugged in. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've, got, I've got plus 21. It's not like I'm a slouch okay, in this yeah, department, yeah. but it's a, uh, you know. <laughs> Man, right, this so, has gone uh, from, from first to worst, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 44 on the computer's check. Yeah, yeah, this is only a tier five computer. So, indeed, I think I think We're, technically I need you to make two, one for activating like a lock and another one to get in. Uh, once you're making me just one more. 32. Uh, with your aids, that is going to be enough to both bypass once again another kind of touch screen lock and hack into this PC. So being able as, to read the Remy Sibian. does that, mm-hmm. the, the, there's a, a little like sheen that pops up and mm-hmm. the, the phrase hacker man appears above his head. Oh yeah. Oh, I, I imagine <laughs> your techno magic hacking looks like matrix source code on top of the 
computers for minority report you're just like moving around all the ones and zeros you're like ah oh, this is how magic works in the future <laughs> ah. i agree this is a huge database i i mean it doesn't seem like a large enough computer but there are thousands of files here that seem to be all about the facility there seems to be a long list of inventoried items and like personnel and projects and things like that that you can kind of read through that is also going to take some time to do but indeed you can at least 100% confirm this is a civ dominion base some kind of research base do you, do you want to spend some time reading through these files before you, you move on? Do you guys want to spend some time looking through the this room? Yes. Yeah, while they're working on the computers, I'll, I'll be sort of perusing these shelves. Yeah. And I think we've already done perception checks. For the most part, you guys can actually work in tandem because part of the files, it does seem like perhaps this was like the quartermaster's computer as you get into it, as a lot of them are pertaining to the shelves and things in this room. So one person can kind of, kind of download an inventory list and they can start going through things and, and find indeed that there are techno magic items here that are potentially still in, in use. How long are you willing to spend sorting through both files and IRL knickknacks, paddywax, technological items? Dog so I have, I have two questions for that. One, Mm -hmm. how long does Raimi's Comprehend Languages spell last? That's a good question. I don't know the answer. That's a long time. And two, with my skilled linguist being able to decipher 250 words per minute with uh, with my uh, my envoy ability, how how quickly can I effectively learn enough of the language to get through this? I mean, you might be able to, you know, read through some of the computer stuff pertaining to this room to to reduce the amount of time like it, it would take everyone else to sort. I'm guessing everyone else besides Remy wants to maybe sort some materials here. Sure. I guess I, I, I mean, I did even mention like the length of this room is like well over what 80 feet of, of these two rows of line shelves. So, I mean, it's pretty massive you know like warehouse sized so this this will take some time and i will roll that but yeah i think because there's so many of you searching that part is going to be a lot faster after about an hour of or so of, of searching the shelves and, and cross-referencing perhaps with Ramy and Nack reading through the computer you find probably all the things that are I mean, a lot of this stuff could be like studied later on and kind of retro engineered. But the only stuff that is working is, let's see, what will I need you to roll for? So there is a suit of armor that you can spend some time retrofitting to to fit one of you guys if you want to make some engineering checks. I believe it is a heavy suit of armor, an engine runner set of, of armor, which is level 15 memory serves what looks to be a maybe a packed world's equivalent uh, i should say of engine runner armor which is like looks seemingly lightweight but there's very heavy durable plates kind of woven in to a fiber weave that makes it look like you're just wearing a padded flight suit but it is a lot more protection wow there is a mark one reflector spell armor upgrade four ultra capacity batteries and we were just talking about it a, a vorpal fusion seal mm. seal so everyone's the seal getting their arms a, chopped off the seal have a uh, uh, number on that 18th level oh hey there hey yeah there. so pretty high pretty good. Uh, take this one to the end of the campaign <laughs> seal and yeah, I think in addition to the stuff you've pried off of the armor, uh, I think that's everything in this room. And getting back into the computer bits, Raimi, uh, after about an hour or so of, of digging through some of the 
the files here, like I said, they are thick and fast. There are thousands and thousands of them. You find a good amount of information, in, including what looks like the largest kind of like projects that the, the base was working on. They were doing like experimentation on life forms here, nanotech research, but the largest projects that were overseen by what looks to be a figure cited in a lot of these files, Commandant Varanch is... One is it's called Arc Prime, and the other is labeled World Seed. Hey, as, as you guys are, are looking through those, why don't well M- Miles first because you're mostly uh, the primary here on the the PC. Why don't you make me a computer's check? Okay, um, to see if you can figure out what these code names are. That's a forty four. The information seems to be uh, designations for devices or possibly starships. It is a lot of technical schemata that some could be like designations of like small rooms and things like that. Others like massive engines. It is very possible that this is something that the civs were were working on to potentially combat or negate something like a stellar degenerator, some kind of project that might give them an edge against the Kish Ali. So were they, they were making something that was the antithesis of the stellar degenerator? Perhaps. It, it seemed to be a furious project that a lot of other science stations in the Sibian domain were working in conjunction with reading further into it if if that is a, a subject of interest you want to focus on yeah the- i mean Raimi, Raimi's a little i guess a little confused because mm-hmm. it seems to him and this is just him going based off of what he's seeing in front of him that these folks are are doing things sort of in the interest of the universe or at least in the interest of the universe as as Raimi sees it so, so he's a little, so he's a little confused as to why you know, the, he's fighting against their defenses. The, the Stellar Degenerator was Sibian technology, but it was pretty early on in their, like, extended conflict taken by the Kishali. So perhaps it was a, a means of trying to get it back or neutralize it. Okay. If it is indeed a, a D-Day kind of weapon, maybe they wanted some way to even the the playing field as you read on there's like project notes that make reference to perhaps jingoistic phrases talking about the civ supremacy in the face of kishly trickly uh, trickery (laughs) kishly trickly oh that's a a (laughs) mystery I love that I I think I think it should be (laughs) I think that's like the Sibian like accent they say tr- trickly. And I mean, these files are, you know, thousands of years old, but a lot of them indicate that the launch of the Arc Prime project was rushed and many of the facilities servitors collapsed from overworking, you know, under the, this massive workload and, and small time frame to finish finish that and the, the world seed. Do we know what the Arc Prime program was? Some kind of massive empire-wide project, secret military project. Reading further into it, you get an announcement in this computer file that looks like a a, a base-wide, a, a facility-wide announcement of an an accident and a subsequent lockdown of the the entire Nexus. That reads, after the incident, the research will need to be put on hold till things can be sorted out next week when we are to be continued. (laughs) We gotta gotta take a a week break before the (laughs) Civ get back to their technology. Uh, A lot of information here, a lot of info dumping about uh, the civs who we've not seen a ton of but obviously no 
survivors, no scientists that you've found so far in this base. So we will continue on with the search for them and answers about this ancient tech uh, next week. If I have to guess now that there's something, this project called Arc Prime from the Civ, we're probably going to get some kind of project from the Kishley called like Kishatron or something. (laughs) <laughs> the I quite frankly would welcome Kishatron at this point. Kishatron! <laughs> All right. Uh, that is going to do it, folks. Guys, thanks for playing with me. Thank, Thank you, you Patrick. Patrick. I'm really hesitating to say that this week, but... Hey, we managed. We, we managed all right. Good thing there wasn't two of them. Back to all be dead. Oh. There was two. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine. imagine. Don't, don't worry. You'll you'll have more chances for things like this. This, oh, yeah. I, this, this is usually one of those things where it's like they throw something like that in, and then either you know next level or level fifteen. It's like okay, remember these? Now there's four, there's five of them. <laughs> there's, yeah. there's seventeen. Well, this of them. is just. This is just the the armor. <laughs> it's like people that go in the armor. We will catch you next time. The same podcast, same podcast feed. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time on Cosmic Crit. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Good night. And good night. Cosmic Crit, an officially licensed partner of Paizo Incorporated. The Starfinder role-playing game and adventure paths are trademarks of Paizo. All Pathfinder and Starfinder images are property of Paizo and are used with permission. 